Mm. Welcome back. You're watching State of the Race here on KTN News. Thank you for staying with us. Um, I'd like us to take a very different turn to this discussion. Religious leaders from uh, different denominations from across the country are holding prayers for the country as you count down the days to the August 8th general election. So the meeting was convened by the multi-sectoral sectoral forum and brings together interfaith communities, the private sector, and basically just praying for peaceful election. Let's listen in to what some of the religious leaders had to say, then we'll have a conversation about it. If our elections will not be of integrity, and then we cannot pretend to have a legitimate outcome and provide the winners with legitimacy. And for us to remain in peace in those different circumstances, we must respect the otherness of others. Because in as much as we have the sameness, we also have the otherness of the other person. And if we can be able to to listen to one another and respect that otherness without prejudice, we will forever remain in peace. It's very unfortunate that the exercise of our democratic right turns out to be such a fearful event. We have a democratic right to be able to make a choice to be able to make a decision. And that democratic right ought to be done without fear, without favor. So the reason why I think it's important for us to have this conversation um, stems back to 2007, 2008. And the reason why is because a lot of blame was apportioned to the church because there are those who thought that they didn't play their role as the church in guiding the, the, the country. So we have 11 days to the general election and you have religious leaders having a meeting and saying probably we need to pray for this country. Um, Alex, let me begin with you. Yes. Have religious leaders done enough to steer the country in the right path in terms of um, how we conduct our elections, how we carry ourselves around? Uh, to start with, uh, even before I answer your question, it is important to understand and acknowledge the fact that uh, the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya actually acknowledges God, the Almighty God. And this is what the preamble says. Acknowledging the supremacy of the Almighty God of all creation. So from the word, even before we go to the freedom fighters, which is the next, uh, we have, so, so, so I'm, saying, I'm saying the role that God plays. Okay. We have acknowledged as a nation that we have God and we acknowledge him, and that Kenya, as, as it is, his role is very important. So that goes to the <coughs> next level. His disciples, those are the preachers, those are the bishops, those are actually bishops, have they played their role as they're supposed to do? Out of 100, I would say 40, especially during wow. the time of crisis, especially during the time. That's a fail, you know. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Uh, and, and I hope they are going to forgive me because they're supposed to forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> now, you remember, in 2007, they were accused, even before the escalation to, 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 to 2008, they were accused that all along, even when they could see signs on the wall, to use the imagery in the Bible, they did not come well in good time mm. to ensure that they, they, they held the entire country together and even to warn the leaders and even to mobilize all over the Remember churches, churches are very strong. It's, it's, the constituency of churches in Kenya is so enormous. No president of Kenya, from Kenyatta to Moi to Kibaki to even Uru himself, none of them would ever dare, can ever dare to go the wrong way as far as the church is concerned. They respect the church so because could they know the constituency. Yes, this of, course, of course, you can't do without the church in Kenya. In fact, if the church decided against you, you are doomed as a presidential candidate. So That's they are a very, lie. Yes. That's a lie. That's because, a lie. <laughs> because when it comes to the referendum... They yeah. lost. They no. lost. All now, let's, 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 let me finish let's, my narrative. Let's Can I finish it. my let's narrative? Let's Can I quickly, my quickly. Yeah. Let me finish my narrative. So for me, it is 40 out of uh, 100. But even to the extent that they have come out now, I am very, very, very grateful to them. Uh, yes, eleven days to the election. Yes, I'm grateful. At least, at least they are doing something. At least they are doing Davis. something. Well, you see, religion is the salt of society, and they help to sever the continuity. The, con the society being continuum, the place of religion is very important. However, as a practicing Christian, I've brought myself again to another appreciation hmm. that the church 
has perfected the art of sitting on its own hands until the 11th hour. Now, even the scripture itself teaches us that faith, while it's good without action, it is dead. Now, the issue here is not just a question of speaking to the press and belaboring the necessity of peace in this election. And having a rally at Uhuru Park. Yes, they should go and, because nearly everybody goes to a church or a mosque, or, you know, all this, we don't have a synagogue here. Mm. Oh, nearly everybody. So people, these religious leaders, the imams, the preachers, etc., need to speak within communities, within the churches, and implore the people. But beyond that, mm. one thing that baffles me even the more, we had prayers of the nation some time back, all right? One was held by the government of Jubilee at Uhuru Park. Mm. Then the NASA, NASA team went and had, their had own. another prayer at a different uh, that says venue. a lot. Mm. All right? The thing is this. How united is the religious voice in this country? What ends are they trying to meet? And the thing is this. To which gods are they praying separate prayers the same day and cannot bring their prayers together as people who mean well for the greater good of the nation? So the thing is this. It is good what the religious leaders have said. But I think it's not even enough. Mm. because they should not just speak to the people. Because the people always listen. They hearken to the political leaders. Javas, do you get a sense that religious leaders in this country are at a point where they can actually steer the political um, road sure of the country that. in this sense? If Assuming we have this election and something goes wrong, God forbid, do you think they are at a position where they can bring stakeholders together and have a conversation? One, they have lost the stake. So they can hardly hold all the other stakeholders together. They cannot bring them. Now, look, where is it that they started losing the grip? You remember in the run-up to you know, the 2005 referendum, then towards the 0708 uh, elections, the 07 Actually, elections. Actually, they're accused of taking sides in 2007. You know, they just, they're not just accused. They took sides. A preacher coming from a particular community would favor a presidential candidate of that kind of leaning. It was obvious it was open. And that is why, after the post-election violence of 0708, religious leaders, the church and you know, the, you know, preachers, imams, etc., have struggled to gain credibility. Mm. And they're still struggling. In fact, if as the, the way the nation has been struggling to speak to matters of credibility within other critical institutions, judiciary, police, etc., mm. it would have been proper for the people also to demand for the restoration of credibility within the religious bodies, because there, still credibility is an issue. OK, Joshua, has the church lost its moral standing yes. to lead this yes. country? Let me say why. Politically, yeah. morally, yes, they are still there. But they are grappling. The church is in, in a fight for its place. Let me give the context, and I'll give it a historical basis. The church from the 60s, 70s, you know, even before the independence, they were the center for the fight of independence. They were, they were always on the right side of history that coming even post-independence, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s, the peak of the church's uh, moral positioning was the 90s. They were at the forefront. If you look at the illustrious career of the church leaders of the 90s, they still stand up, up to now. Two weeks ago, I was in, um, I was in a place in Nandi called Chapter Y where they were unveiling a house for the grandmother of Bishop Muge. And you could see the symbolism and everything. Bishop Alexander Muge, Henry Okulu, Gitari, the enjoyers, the 90s was their peak mm. because they were on the right side. They could speak morally. The Fungamano Initiative. Now, come post two or three, that is where the trouble started. Their action, whatever, their activism and their clamor generated an opposition win. And just like the civil society, they were lost in the moment. Why? The people they are voting for are now in government. Then they now start committing the same evils the church has been fighting for. So there's that disconnect. Mm -hmm. So you had a church that was found on a black foot. So what happened? Over time, the church went mellow and quiet. The vicious and powerful and consistent church that we had pre-202 and post-202, that changed. So what happens? The, the fight for the soul of the moral reasoning of the church came to a noose dive in 207. What happened? They now degenerated into the tribal fight and everything. And post-207, they kind of came out atoning by being quiet. 
staying out of trouble. It's like, how do we regain our moral authority after the mess of 207? Let's atone by just being quiet. What happens? It reinforced the people's opinion that the church was lost. It's about money. And from 208 coming forward, their biggest undoing is this. Mm -hmm. Up to 2013, you find that a church has been put on a position where it's like a politician can buy them. That as long as I, I pay and do such things, yeah, I'll always get someone. Reserves. You can even, I've ever heard of these prayers during political rallies. Mm -hmm. It is choreographed prayer. Like it's, <laughs> It's one prayer that even if I was closing my eyes, I would open at some point and say, are you sure? <laughs> like, for example, if Alex attends a prayer meeting where there's NASA rally, yeah. and you know Alex is, 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 is possibly worshipping with a priest, I'm sure halfway he'll, he'll, he'll open his eyes and say no, because the prayer will be tailor-made to the messaging True. of the political rally. Mm -hmm. Now, that one chips away their moral standing. But I'm happy about this. For the last three years, I've realized they are quickly and nicely backpedaling. Mm. After the ICC issue, they are quietly coming back. Let me pick out, have you seen the, whatever, the new ACK Archbishop, mm. um, Olesa Pitt and the rest? Even that clip that you've just shown, there's something powerful they have said. Okay. And like other entities, they have mentioned about free and fair, fair poll. Right. They have not yeah. just been voting for peace. So you think they they're on said, the right track? So I think they are making their way back, and I'll use the same yardstick Alex used. I'll give them four out of ten. Mm. In a year or two, they can get back where they were. Okay. Bottom line is, stick with the issues, speak the truth. I, I still have those pointers that I can talk about. I still, every time I read about Father Gabriel Dolan, I say, that should be where the church should okay. be. Okay, let's to wrap it up on that note, people. Thank you so much for watching State of the Race. Uh, this Thursday, Alex Gatundu, Javas Bigambo, and Joshua Kipto. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time, people. Thank you for watching State of the Race. Have a good night. I'm Linda Ugutu.